Yo, what is up guys? This is your boy AR15 back for part two of the Marine Corps recruit training program. Alright, so a little quick recap. If you haven't watched the first video, I got my first ass whooping. They taught me how to march, how to regret joining the military. I was about to shit myself when I met this boy. And that pretty much sums it all up. They made me do a shitload of push-ups as well. Now, the second part that I want to cover in this recruit training series is height and weight standards. I was, I'm still 5'7", obviously, but back in the trenches, back in the day, I was weighing about 117 120-ish So in Marine Corps standards, I was too skinny for my weight and my height So they made me double rations recruit. I used to have a quick a red little tab on my left shoulder Next to the blouse on my blouse area Meaning that every time I went to the cafeteria to get some of that chow or food as we know it today as a civilian They gave me double everything now, that is cool and all, all right? But what sucks about it is that I still have two minutes to eat all my food, okay? So it kind of sort of works out in a way, but at the it's a double-edged sword, okay? For example, I'm five, seven, about a buck 20. They feed me twice as much as everybody else, and they make you eat the whole plate before. You can't leave. Okay, and it's on your best interest to eat the whole plate because otherwise you're gonna pay for not for having these guys throw that food away that they work so hard to cook for you. All right. So there was times that the drill instructors were pissed off because we've been fucking up, and you're always fucking up. You never do anything right, anyways. And what they do is, you know, they're like, by the time I finish drinking this glass of water, you better be done with all of your chow. And it would be like the days that you get like turkey breast and it's freaking hot as shit. And you just swallow it and it burns your throat. It was bad news. Now, it also sucks for the fat bodies or the overweight people. Because they still have to meet the Marine Corps standard when it comes to weight. But these guys, they only eat salad, so they're hungry. Okay, you're hungry all day. Even if you're a double rations recruit, you're still hungry because they wear you out by running, by doing push-ups, by hurry here, by carry that, by doing this, blah, 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 blah. Everything that they do just destroys you mentally, okay? So what does it do? It just wears you out. So you're hungry and you're uncomfortable and everything's just bad. Life sucks, okay? Life sucks all day. Now, if you're overweight, it sucks even worse because you eat like... You can't even touch peanut butter because of the calories that it contains, okay? You just eat salad with cottage cheese until you meet the Marine Corps weight standards. And it sucks because... They need extra training to lose weight. So every time they say, get on my quarter deck, which is the place where they make you push, run, jump, do backflips if possible to make sure that you get that training in you to lose weight. They always call it, they're called diet recruit. Okay, the overweight recruit. So they these guys get broken mentally before anybody else can be broken down. And what happens? They get up there. Some people were running up there and they were already crying. It was that bad, okay? <laughs> now, obviously, everything in recruit training is not horrendous, okay? There's, you know, you get to learn all kinds, all kinds of cool stuff. They teach you how to camouflage your face. They, you know, you learn how to shoot a rifle. You know, you learn that you can shoot a rifle at 500 yards and still hit targets like in the face or in their chest or, you know, whatever, all right? So, I mean, there's a lot of cool things. And then the thing about it is that, you know, after a while, you kind of catch on. You you get used to the environment that you're in, that you're in, excuse me. That if they tell you to push, you know, you're laughing when they're telling you to push because you already understand what's going on. 
Not that you don't care, because they'll know if you don't care. And they will own you. Irregardless, they will destroy your life. They're gonna make it uncomfortable either way. Okay? They always find a way. Alright? Alright? Uh, another thing about recruit training is like, for example, uh, there's three phases. The first phase is when you hate life. Second phase is where you kind of understand, you start going to the field, you shoot your rifle. Third phase, you know, you're already all disciplined, you're badass, you're ready to get out of there, go home, see your your girlfriend Susie, find out she's been cheated on you with Rico Suave, you know, all that cool stuff, right? See your family, what have you. In the second phase is when you're always in the field, you know, so they you go on humps, all right? Now, if the East Coast is different than the West Coast, not that it makes them any, any better than the other because they're still Marines, but it's just a competition thing that we do with each other. Marines are very compet competitive individuals. They're going to compete with every branch, all right? If you guys see logos out there, you notice that it says once a Marine, always a Marine. You know, uh, people, for example, like Army guys, not nothing against the Army. One of my best friends is a Ranger or was a Ranger because once you leave the Army, you're no longer a soldier. You're an ex-soldier. When you leave the U.S. Marines, you're a former Marine. It's a title that nobody can take away from you. So it's something that you're always going to hold and you're always going to be proud of. And it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. You know, my buddy, you know, he still, like, gives me crap every now and then. Like, oh, you freaking Marines. You know, and we talk shit back and forth, to you know, to one another. But we are still got each other's back. We're the same team, different uniform. That's the difference. That is the only difference, okay? I met Army people that are better than some of the Marines that I work with. So, I mean, it, it doesn't take away from him, you know, because he's in another branch. It, it doesn't at all. Nothing. It's just, you know, that competitive edge that a lot of Marines have. That's all it is. Anyways, you know, we go on, on, on hikes, right? So the first hike you do is a three-mile hike. Second hike you do is a six-mile hike. The third hike you do is a 12-mile hike, right? Now, that hike is called a hump. You know, you're packing about 95 pounds of gear, your flag jacket, your helmet, your rifle, your water. It's ridiculous, okay? And the worst part is that towards the middle, when you get to the middle of that hump, there's a mountain that's called the Reaper. And the reason why it's called the Reaper is because it's super steep. So if you fall, like you're gonna roll downhill all the way until you get to the bottom. Like nothing will save you. Okay, you have to lean forward so much that you can touch the ground in front of you. That's how deep it is. The thing that sucks about it is when you're coming down, because that that hill is still that steep. So you have like 95 pounds plus all the other extra gear, and you're just you can't walk. You're running the way down. A lot of people get stress fractures on their hips. You know they send them to medical. They can't resume their training for like another three months. The reason why I'm saying that is because one of the guys that was in my recruit training class, uh, uh, in my boot camp, excuse me, my sample sample tune, like the same thing happened to him. It was bad. It was bad. It wears you out. And then, you know, you're in the field, so you don't eat as much as you normally do. For example, I was double rations. When you're out there for three days, you get three MREs. So your stomach's really tight. You can only fit water. That day when you get back, they call it the warrior's chow, meaning you can eat as much as you can, but you can barely eat a plate because your stomach is so tight, you know. And then you go back to your barracks. You take a shower. You take your cavity paint off. You wash your shit, whatever. And you're just laying there all day long trying to recover from that hike that you did because it's the first time that you ever done it, you know? Then right after, you know, you graduate boot camp, you know, you march, your family says, hi, yeah, I missed you, boo-hoo, whatever. You come on 10 days vacation and then they send you to Marine Corps combat training. That's when you, you know, start shooting the, the, the actual machine guns. You chuck a grenade because every Marine chucks a grenade. So every Marine knows exactly what they're doing, all right? Once you're done with that, which is about 30 days, you only shower on Sunday, so you smell like dog's ass every day of the week, except for Sunday, all right? Then from there, they send you to your actual school. For example, if you're administration, you go to administration school. If you're a truck driver like I used to be, you go to truck driving school, you know, what have you. That is about a month long. The whole first six months is nothing but training, okay? Recruit training, Marine Corps combat training, then your actual job training. And it's like a whole scare. Okay, they're always fucking with your mind. They go, oh, you know, you're gonna fucking get your ass kicked. 
blah, blah. They're gonna take off their blouse and take you behind the truck and they're gonna fuck you up and all these garbage, right? Which never happens. I mean, yeah, you get drop kicked every now and then. You can't do it anymore. You know, I used to do that when I was a sergeant. I used to tell Marines, you know, we're, we're doing exercises on how to clear a house or what have you and he keeps doing the shit the wrong way. Hey, dog. This is the fourth time you do it. you still messing up. If you don't do it right, you're gonna fly down them stairs. And sure shit, kicked in the chest, rolling down the stairs like a bow. And then after that, somehow miraculously, they knew how to clear half. So it's just one of those, like, you're always training, you're always learning, you're always going to different schools. Even after recruit training, you know, even after you finish your MOS school and, the, you know, your, your actual specialty, your job. You know, it's just one of those things, all right? All right, guys, this is it for recruit training part two plus additional training. Make sure you smash that like button, all right? Make sure you subscribe to this channel to see more than videos like this. Your boy AR-15 was playing like a boss today. Once again, I want to thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more.